Russell Zone presents Lost in the Mid Card. Here are your hosts, Jeremy Bennett and Matt Black. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast where pro wrestling continues to be wild as hell. It's lost the mid card. Welcome. We got a lot to cover tonight. We got, of course, AEW Dynasty this weekend, this Sunday on pay per view. We'll be uh, predicting the card there at the end of the show. We got Windy City Riot to talk about. We got some debuts to talk about. We've also got contract news and injury news to talk about in regards to Drew McIntyre and Rhea Ripley and a lot of stuff to cover but first let's uh make sure that you are subscribed to the channel wrestle zone all one word and uh make sure you hit that bell icon so you know every time we go live at 7 10 eastern 6 10 central monday night leading you up to monday night raw make sure to give us a thumbs up on the video as well let's get this uh spread out to as many people as we can and uh if you're watching us live uh join us in the chat as guys like uncle howdy mark cho Stephen Chambers and Frantic World have on a regular basis. Appreciate everybody tuning in tonight for what's going to be a very interesting show, I would uh, assume. Uh, I am your host, Jeremy Bennett. You can find me on the Twitter at JB Huskers, as always, my co host. He is on the Twitter at Raw F Showtime. It is Matt Black. Matt, how you doing? Man, I'm doing good, man. Like, I don't understand why everybody's so upset about everything in professional wrestling right now we are we are eating good as wrestling fans right now and people just there's some upset people dude there's so many upset people like people just why y'all gotta overreact to everything in 2024 it, it's it's getting exhausting at, at, at this point y'all gotta chill y'all got a chill. lot we got a lot to cover and this will probably have a lot of uh, uh crowd participation involved in it so let's throw up that greeny graphic of our main story of the evening, which was, of course, from AEW Dynamite. The news broke literally uh, as we were on uh, on the air or go- getting on the air last week, and uh, a lot of people think it might be a swerve. A lot of the uh, wrestling journalists, such as Sean Ross Sapp and Dave Meltzer, said, no swerve, this is going to for real happen, and sure enough, it, it did. Um, they showed the... Uh, uh, well, I'd say entire footage. It was like literally a minute of uh, what happened between CM Punk and Jack Perry at Wembley, uh, which um, was very interesting, very lackluster. But let's just go. I want to first talk about the reason. For, well, not the reason for it, but kind of the storyline reason for it with FTR. I thought that in a way, I thought it was kind of a good thing to implement this into uh the, the feud with bucks and ftr did it necessarily need to be shown i don't know a lot of a lot of people even aew fans uh kind of thought that maybe this should not have been shown uh, a lot of people say that it proved cm punk right basically he which everything that I, he said which i don't get at all dude says he didn't throw any throw any shots or fists or anything and he just choked him a little bit like, that's what it looked was, like. He shoved him and choked him. He he threw a punch. He threw a, multiple shoves. Like I don't know. Like I don't know how people can look at that footage and and not and not think that Punk's version of the events didn't go one hundred percent of the way that he said that they did. Um, but it is what it is. You know, what's done is done. As Bob it, says it, on the chat, it benefits no one. Yeah, but no, I, you know what? I disagree because I think it's going to benefit Jack Perry. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. I think it's going to benefit Jack Perry tremendously. And I think he's going to return a dynasty and help the Young Bucks win those tag titles from FDR in the ladder match. I know I'm giving away my match prediction ahead of time, but no. I, I think I think Jack Perry makes his big return to AEW this Sunday night. He's going to help the Young Bucks win. He's going to get a tremendous amount of heat. And he's going to be the newest member of the elite. 
So what it benefits is- no one. I disagree. One, I think it benefits Jack Perry. Two, I guarantee you, within the next, it might not be tonight, might not be next week, but before it's all said and done, this footage is going to benefit Drew McIntyre in some way. Oh. Drew McIntyre is going to use this footage, oh, yeah. his advantage to get one of his shots off on Punk, and it's going to be beautiful. Oh, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. And to me, that's a win, too. What something is interesting? Out of AEW gets something out of it. WWE gets something out of it. Yeah. I don't think I don't think at all. What is interesting is the fact that Jack Perry did not get outright booed in Chicago of all places where I mean we'll talk when he you... had some support there he did it was wild like and what was the chant like you got choked or you you got choked out and then and the other crowd was like saying no he didn't like there was people it was like 50 50 in Chicago who he came out with the Chicago flag and then it was insane um yeah I you know again you know, I, to me, it almost did seem like a lot of it was what Punk said. You know, I really didn't see a punch there, but I did also did not watch it a million times. I didn't lo- look at it in slow mo instant replay or anything like that. I watched it on Dynamite. A lot of people saying Shivani was embarrassed that they showed it, and then Shivani later on, hold on, on and later job. on, and later on, Renee was embarrassed at Will Ospreay's comments. I watched Dynamite today because I've been very busy. I watched Dynamite today. No, they were both trying to keep laughter in. I don't think Tony was and and Renee were look were disgusted with what was said. I think they were both trying to keep a straight face. To be honest, I think they're both. I, I like I said, I'll get back to what I said. I think they're both very good at their jobs. And yeah. they and they knew they knew exactly what they were doing. It's their job to react. Oh my God! Everybody you, was like, you, "Oh, you, oh, you, oh you, go you, Tony!" You know, Tony's going to quit. Uh, Renee's going to quit. They're like, "Yeah, they're going to quit." No. They were trying to keep a straight face, guys. See, I don't think they were trying to keep a straight face as much as they were trying to act their part. Yeah. I I really I I think I think they both played their roles perfectly. So this rolls and, in with uh obviously this both these both things happened on Wednesday, literally back to back. Uh Will Ospreay uh uh rightfully uh gave his stance about not not grinding uh as a wwe wrestler does and uh he rightfully said uh how much he's how hard he's worked to get to where he's at now and then through uh uh through a uh, he was grinding the boss's daughter and that's how he got his position which you can't argue because triple h was this close to getting fired in the curtain call by the way in 1997 or six or whatever it was. Could you imagine this- what W? Could you imagine what WWE would look like right now if Triple H got released back then and never came back? This close to getting fired. By the way, That's, like, look, John Cena was on the brink of being fired before the before Stephanie McMahon uh, discovered his rap. Oh, Can yeah. you imagine right? what the state the of plane. professional wrestling would be today? Had WWE went ahead and fired Triple H and John Cena when they did, yeah. and they yeah. never, and they never stuck around to become the people that they are, I don't. I have no idea what the industry would look like right now in 2024 without yeah. those two key pieces in the machine being plugged in when they were. If it wasn't, yeah, if it wasn't for him rapping on the corporate plane, yeah, I think it was in the back of a bus. Oh, okay. I thought it was the plane. No, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure it was in the back of the bus. I feel like they were on like a like a UK tour or something. Uh, they were traveling from, you know, town to town in a, bu- in a, in a big bus. So, uh, you know, to go back to the, uh, the all in footage to me, I don't know if it should have been shown, but at the same time, it's not really as earth shattering as people are making it out to be. People, and... are, people are see, like the Pete between, between people online in the old head podcasters who want nothing more than to promote doom and gloom in the world of professional wrestling, act like this is the fucking end of the world for everything. This yeah, is it. The, this is yeah. the finger poke of doom. This is... Yeah, a, they're uh, saying AEW's yeah, just, WCW. AEW's yeah, gone. Think, people had the nerve to say this was 2000 WCW. And to that I say, most of you fuckers saying that weren't around to watch 
2000 WCW because I if was... you were, you would damn well know that they're not even freaking close. No. Like, holy hell, these people just with these terrible hot shot takes who have no clue what they're talking about. Just look just up Vince Russo and Hogan. Make themselves sound smart. Awful, dude. Just look Awful. up Vince Russo and Hogan from WCW. Uh, look at Jarrett laying down for Hogan. I think that might have been the same night. Was that the same night? Bash of the Beach was yeah. Jarrett lay, Jarrett lay down for Hogan. And was Russo that the same night the that Hogan out. cut that promo on on Russo? Well, 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 Hogan only said like three lines. Russo cut the promo on Hogan. Oh, yeah. Um, AEW later is Booker, then later that night. Booker T beat Jarrett for the title, which was so deserving. He should have beat Triple H for the title back when he also. Um, as bad as he is on commentary, he was a damn good wrestler. We'll just say that. But God, I cannot stand him on NXT. Man, he's not good, dude. <laughs> he's... Vic um, Joseph, Vic Joseph is so much better with Byron Saxton next to him. It's not even funny. Yeah, I mean Wade and Wade and Vic had such a great chemistry, which is like when Cole steps down, I really hope they reunite Wade and Vic on Monday Night Raw. Well, be Wade, Wade Wade deserved his promotion. And I mean, honestly, yeah. I'd argue Vic deserves a promotion as well. But I mean, that's why Wade got hired because he did so good in NWA. But man, you know? Booker Booker T is just—he's not good. He doesn't he's know the, the product half the time. He no, doesn't he know doesn't the names. Know he comes, he comes on. He, he does his little sound bites every week, yeah. and we, people, people, uh, people no water, people just me. Some people laugh at it, but I mean, on, I'm just like, I'm annoyed. I'm, I'm annoyed. Yeah. Like, dude, you're, you're getting paid. To come on here and do sound bites instead of actually doing co calling commentary in the show that you're on, it I, I can't stand it. He was calling. Uh, he called Josh Briggs Brooks Jensen, who they do not look anything alike. Um, but anyways, uh, going here back to the chat. Let's see here. Um, Andrea Price, hey, thank you for joining us. Hello, what's up? Stephen Chambers wants to see the locker room fight. Yeah, I want to see uh, Larry get into it with those guys, man. I bet you Larry yeah, was. We're, I bet we're Larry never, never going to see the all. We're never going to see that because there's not there's not cameras in in private locker rooms. No. Um. And plus the mo like the most you're ever going to get from from that was pro probably Kenny Omega's comments <laughs> about it Mark on his uh, on his Twitch stream last week. Mark Cho, I definitely see no Viagra or forklifts on Dynamite or Judy Bagwell. There's no Judy Bagwell on Dynamite. Yeah, no yet. Viagra on a pole. No Judy Bagwell on a pole. <laughs> Is no, Judy still alive? I hope she is because she was such she a good is. sport. I think she passed away, unfortunately. She was such a good sport to all that shit. Um, yeah, she passed away. Say, I agree with MK. I I think Two this helped years ago. I think this helped Perry. Oh, it did absolutely. And, and I, and I, if I you had Perry's... half a Chicago cheering him, if you had I half think... a Chicago. I come truly on. believe without without this airing, if Perry would have when Perry would have come back, it would have went over like a fart in church. Like, oh yeah, Jack Perry's back. Who cares? I think this. I think this is going to be the key factor in his return, actually meaning something. And I think him being aligned with Okada and the Young Bucks could probably lead to this year's uh, blood and guts. Yeah. And you said it yourself, like you didn't like, well, and we will get to Windy City Riot later on, but obviously this is also a major part of it, though. The fact that that Jack Perry actually showed respect to Umino after the, that great match that they didn't had. like. That's the only thing I didn't like. Yeah, I, I I don't know if he thought they were they were off the air, you know, already and doing doing a segment or something like I'm not I'm not sure what that was about. But um, AEW but, is yeah, I did, not I did, I did not care for that. AEW is not in decline. Well, yeah, well, they aren't MK, going anywhere. It's another, another good point. When AEW Reach gets their new media rights deal with Warner Brothers Discovery this year, like that's going to lock in their at least the next five years yep. of that company on TBS and TNT and yep. probably co-streaming on Max as well. Like yep. they're not going anywhere. And if no. anything, they're going to be even bigger and more profitable once this uh, media rights still goes in. I believe it'll be done at some point this summer. But you know, because you, clearly the IWC, the, the WBD's main focus right now is getting that NBA deal done. The uh, until that uh, until that NBA deal is done, they're not getting their um the AW deal is not going to get hammered out. 
But so, the IW, but the IWC, much like Eric Bischoff, is holding on to them archaic Nelson ratings as wins when they're not really wins. When it's more about social media impressions and reach nowadays, and uh, AEW is profitable. By the we way. also need to keep in mind, a, um, Warner Brothers Discovery, within the last couple of weeks, I don't remember when it was, it was in the last couple of weeks, sent out a press release regarding all their television programming mm-hmm. and, what it, and what they're doing and what it's doing for their networks. And like I said, yeah. they see numbers that we don't see. All yeah. we see is, all we get to ever see is the overnight stuff. We don't see the DVR numbers. We don't see the plus sevens. We don't see any of the, the future viewing that these networks take into effect with their YouTube TV slaying. They, they've gone on record as saying that the AEW product across the board um brings in four million four million viewers every week. Four yeah. million. Yeah. And you, you take that and you, you factor in you think about it, a WWE's probably like Raw's probably doing eight. You know, if you're you if you're talking Raw SmackDown, they're probably doing somewhere between eight to ten million. Like that's the, the wrestling it, business is the wrestling business is booming right now, and it yeah. is way more popular in this moment than it was during the Monday Night Wars. Bob, uh, and I know Bob people stream. don't want to believe that, and people don't want to hear it. But yeah. wrestling right now is way hotter now than it's but, ever been, as long as I've been alive. Bob, streaming numbers don't count in the Nielsen ratings because it's only certain Nielsen households, and then they just multiply that number. It's a it's an old system that is way outdated and not really reliable anymore. Except believe, to maybe write an isn't article. It only on. like, isn't it only like fifty thousand households in the in the United States have the yeah. Nielsen box? I don't know. I don't even know if it's that much. I don't even know if it's that many. I think it's fifty thousand. I could be. I could be wrong on that. It's it's a low number because you got to get like we're, this, you know, millions of people. You know, in the in the United oh. States. So. Uh, Forty two thousand. 42,000. So even, yeah, even less, even less than I thought. 42, only 42,000 homes get, get graded on these weekly overnight Nielsen ratings. And then they just multiply things and guesstimate mm-hmm. on how many yeah. a, look, actual viewers it has across the entire United States. Yeah. And if that's not an archaic way to try to draw numbers in the digital age where yeah. people are watching stuff on streaming, on demand, YouTube, like you said, slain. It's totally it. It's a dated concept. It doesn't work anymore. It no. worked in the '90s when there was like the internet wasn't that big, and video surely wasn't big on the internet at the time. And <clears> we <throat> only had like what 50, 60 channels essentially in the in the late '90s to choose from. Whereas now that we have hundreds. You know, like we're in a different we're in a different world now. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and like Jesus, the WWE product is amazing right now. The AEW product has been amazing. It's like you know we're we're in a good time, and but people just want to pick a side still, which is the dumbest thing ever. That's why ridiculous. I say fuck these tribalistic bitches because it's really you're not cool. Uh, you're obvious cool. all your all your comments are obvious and you know and just like my uh, my old cohorts jose and kev when i worked for sports kita enjoy wrestling it's a simple In statement the, the 2024 we have wrestling on like almost every night of the week yep. like there's something for everybody if there's a wrestling product that you don't enjoy don't watch it Exactly. You, need to hate, you don't need to hate watch it. You don't need to go online and complain about it. Just watch the wrestling you enjoy and leave the other wrestling alone. Like, let's, um, to me, let's like, put a... back in the 90s, dude, we only had three options. <laughs> it was WWE, WCW, and ECW. And that was it. Yep. We've got like 20 different wrestling and... promotions now that we can watch on a weekly basis. We are blessed as wrestling fans right now. We and, no and longer he... need to watch something just because well, it's the only thing on. This is the only wrestling ECW, show we've got. ECW got got fucked by TNN because oh, yeah. Daddy Vince came back. So or did not come back, but Daddy Vince wanted in, and uh, so yeah, I mean that they e- the, you ECW's know. ECW was starting to be buried the second they got that deal with TNN. It was the worst yep. thing. Unfortunately, it was the worst thing to ever happen to ECW. 
yeah. at the time people thought it was the best, but it unfortunately turned into the worst thing that possibly could have happened to that company. We'll get into uh, Windy City Riot, Rhea Ripley, Drew McIntyre, Dynasty, and Raw. Raw is loaded tonight, too. Tomatonga. Uh, we'll get all into all of that in a moment. We're going to cover Tama next, but one last thing. Let's put a bow on AEW. I don't blame Will Ospreay for his comments at all. No, dude. <laughs> it was just a funny line. It was, and he like, deserved, like, he deserved to... Uh, respond to that too the shots that you would have never heard the line of triple h wouldn't have put him on blast first on pat mcafee's show it would we would have never heard we would have never heard th th this thing from will but here's the thing the shots back and forth between wwe and wcw on monday nights were 10 times worse than anything we saw from the footage from will osprey's comments the Triple H's comments on the patent. Like, all this stuff is t incredibly tame compared to what we got in the 90s. People just, just relax. It's just pro wrestling. It's it's not life or death. It's going to be okay. I, prom I promise you. We're going to be all right. Let's move on to Friday night. Big thing happening on Friday night with uh, about an hour into the show, the uh, the Bloodline takes the uh, stage and uh i'm oh, sorry i thought we were My going bad. into that one sorry uh, I, I had him i had him out of order that's all right uh i don't think we really had a distinguished order but i figured we'd go right into it uh of course uh solo getting a little more vocal and uh paul Heyman cutting a promo and all of a sudden Tama Tonga makes his debut and attacks the shit out of Jimmy Uso. And then about five spikes and a and a, a chair assisted hip bump into the corner. Jimmy got destroyed. Tama Tonga looks good. Solo stopped Paul from calling Roman Reigns. Does this kind of show you that they, we may be getting a little faction two sides to eat to the faction type of deal and is solo possibly leading tama tonga maybe uh or is the rock leading things in the shadows with uh with solo and tama and and probably jacob fought too sooner rather than later i'm just saying yeah which side will he pick is going to be interesting and maybe no, Hikaleo, is Hikaleo free I, no, he's not. He's under he's not. contract until June, I believe, according to Fightful. But he could factor into this possibly. Later on, maybe. Of yeah. course. But like not mm -hmm. right now. But I def I think Jacob Fatu and Tom Matonga are gonna be a tag team. Because their fathers were a tag team in the eighties. I was called the Islanders. I think they're going to I think they're I don't think they're gonna be called the Islanders, but I do think they're gonna be the next generation of that tag team. And for people who have not seen what Jacob Fatu is capable of, y'all in for a treat. Yep. You're all in for a treat. He, that man is special in the ring. You don't think he should be able to move the, the things that he does at the size that he is. I haven't, I haven't seen that kind of stuff since the days of Yokozuna, man. Because so Yoko, see, uh, Yokozuna moved in, in a way that I didn't think anybody his size should have been able to move. And I feel Jacob Fatu, well, obviously he's not as big as Yokozuna. I yeah. believe the things Jacob Fatu does in that reign, nobody of his size should be able to do. He's he's an he's unbelievable amazing. performer. People who have not seen um, Jacob Fatu are going to be in for a, quite a treat. So you probably babyface side Roman Reigns and the Usos, and of course Paul I, I will would, go. I would believe so. The the OG bloodline. Paul's gonna go. Paul's gonna go with Roman. Yes, Paul. Paul will be with Roman. I I I, I believe I can't remember if Roman said this in his in his biography on A and E or if he said it in an interview leading up to WrestleMania. But he basically said, "If I'm not working with Paul, I don't want to work anymore." Yep. So I I don't I don't believe we're ever going to see Paul in Roman split until Roman is decidingly done, you know, as a as a performer for WWE. So 
And rest in peace, Paul's phone. That, that got a uh, nice stomping thanks to Solo. You know, the Bloodline story just keeps keeps getting interesting, man. Now you got Tomatonga in there. Jesus, that guy's a hell of a shape. And uh, I'd say a great debut. If you didn't know who he well, was, hey, you do when now. One, when one story ends, a new story begins. Yep. That's the and great I, thing about professional wrestling as a whole. You can finish your story, and a whole new story is going to start up the next day. And <laughs> I, think, I think that's right. an incredible thing. Stephen Chambers is right. Half off on all no yeet shirts now because – we're going back to yeet. <laughs> we're gonna. Be I don't eating. think we're gonna I, look the way they wrote Jimmy off on Friday. I don't think we're gonna see him for a bet. No, but I'm talking long term. Is uh, Jay will be there for him? And my only hold up on that in in getting the Usos back together, especially as a tag team, is Jay has established himself as such a top tier top tier player. A lot of people thought he'd be the one in Gunther. A lot of people yeah. thought he was going to end Gunther's run. So my whole thing, I just worry that you're sacrificing a main event level caliber player to yeah. reform a tag team. I don't know if that's the best call. I mean, I you can align them. Well, I'm not saying they right can, away. They can either. work sometimes, but yeah. I would not. I, to me, I would not be reuniting the Usos as a full time tag team. No, because I think because... there's way too much upside to Jay Uso as a singles act right now. Because if Gable takes uh, the title from Sammy within the next couple of months, if he turns heel and takes the Intercontinental, well, we can see, see that. We can see that as early as tonight. Are you kidding? And I want. I want to see Jay and Gable at SummerSlam for the IC title. Man, I'd love to see that. Um. And also on SmackDown, another tease for Uncle Howdy. And uh, guess who well, got pulled? We don't, uh, necess- we don't necessarily know for sure that it's Uncle Howdy. We, we know it's we Bo think. Dallas. I think it's going to be another. Oh well, I, Bo I, Dallas, yes. I I but, think he's. Uh, I don't think he's going to. I don't think he's going to come back as Uncle Howdy. I think but, he's going to come back as something new entirely. Yeah, we so just, maybe we a just, creation we Bray had. It might yeah. be a creation Bray had before he passed. Yeah, we 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 don't know. I don't. I but I don't think he's going to be Uncle Howdy. But a certain someone got pulled from the Indies this weekend, Matt. Yeah, Who was buddy. that? Who was that? Eric Rowan, no longer taking indie dates. Back he got down pulled of from this weekend. Multiple last dates. Weekend. Yep. Um, look, look. If you do a new Wyatt family with with Bo, um, Rowan, Braun Strowman, and Alexa six. Bliss, you got to see. Yeah, yeah. Wyatt six. I don't know. Who, I don't know. Who, I don't know who rounds it out. Figure it out. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe they try to do the Wyatt Six. I don't know. Is Mika I mean, I, still I in think... wrestling? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, she looked she looked in good shape on the Wyatt dock, but I mean, I don't know what she's like in the ring. And I don't know if you would really need her and Alexa. <sighs> this is why. Uh, this is why you can't rely on e- on uh, AI. Uh, what? yet, as I said, this about. is why you can't rely on AI yet. I go, I typed in, does Mika Rotunda still wrestled? No, Mike Rotunda re- retired from pro wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <clears throat> god, yeah, yeah, I that was funny. Um, god, every I, I type in Mika, but yet there's still so much on Mike that I can't tell if she still wrestles or not. Yeah, I honestly don't know. I really don't. But yeah, but I, um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they do with Bo. And like, I think I think WWE knows they desperately need to get this right, and it needs to work. And I think yep. they're going to put everything they have creatively behind this to make it work. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Uh, moving on to, uh, this past Friday, New Japan Pro Wrestling was in Chicago for Windy oh, City, did. right? There's my man right there. My number one guy, John Moxley. It's still surreal to think that Mox is the top guy in New Japan now, Matt. I think it's crazier to know that he is the only wrestler ever to be WWE champion. AEW mm-hmm. champion, mm-hmm. IWGP champion. The mm-hmm. only 
person ever to claim that distinction. That's insane, dude. And I don't know if anybody's ever going to take that. I don't know if anybody's ever going to take that accolade from him. Like, I really don't know. He he might he might be the only man to have do that in in the history of this business, and that's one hell of a feather in that man's cap. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> only if Will Ospreay moves to WWE in like five to ten years. <laughs> yeah, I don't see that happening. Well, not not soon. No, no. Um, but uh. Yeah, I don't, you know, Jay White probably ain't going to go to WWE, and he's not even an AEW champ. I mean, how many AEW champions are there that were IWGP? Like the original, like, IWGP. I think just Mox. I think just Mox. I don't think any other AEW world champions have held it. Because it got... Omega, Omega. Yeah, which some people think he could go to WWE someday. I doubt it, but there are people that think he may. It's always that's always possible. Yeah, I, you, you um, don't know. I like. I'm more worried about that man just getting healthy and being able to come back at all. More or like AJ Styles about, you know, if he to... magically goes to AEW instead of retiring, like he says. Yeah, oh, I don't, there, know, I don't know. I don't. I don't know AJ Styles. Um, contract status right now but i mean he's someone yeah if he came over won the aw world title he could he could be in that club as well but i don't know aj brock lesnar brock lesnar aj is pretty much a straight shooter when aj says he's gonna do something he typically he typically isn't talking out of his ass so if, if he's saying he's gonna retire i wouldn't be when surprised he has deals up, right? i think i think WWE. he's gonna i think he's gonna do it just because like of maybe, how well maybe we'll see him in like one offs, like when we see yeah. RVD pop up in AEW and whatnot. Like maybe we'll see AJ over there a couple of times to do like one off matches. But I, I don't I don't foresee him ever wrestling full time again once his once his deals up with WWE. It seems like he's yeah. gonna be, he's gonna be happy to happy to retire with the career that he's had. I mean, considering he's one of the few that came from impact that got treated right by Vince and now triple H, you know, I think the, the I, crazy, no the crazy thing is if styles did go to AEW and win that title, he would have a distinction that not only that, not even John Moxley would have because yeah, he would TNA. be the only man in history to win those three titles and the TNA world heavyweight championship. Was, was he so, ever a NWA heavyweight champion as well? Yes. I know he fought dusty for it once too. Yes. So there's another one right there. Well the, uh, well, the NWA title was the main title in TNA for a for while, like, yeah. For like five, the first five years of the company's existence, I think yep. they didn't. I think they didn't change it over to the TNA title till like 2007 or so, somewhere around there. So they I mean, yeah, like Styles. If if, if you want to count it that way, Styles, yeah, NWA and T, TNA, which would be like that's that's already. Insane another guy that about. another guy that should be on that list that could possibly do it would be Nakamura. He should have been a world champion by now in WWE, but yeah, but that's I mean, two titles he doesn't have. Yeah, yeah. He, he I mean, yeah, I'm he saying he should WWE have been title before he leaves. He should have been a champion by now. Yeah, I I know Jericho just needs the IWGP, but I don't I don't, I don't think see that's them putting happen. it on him. No, I don't see. Ozzy, we are we'll going to, to that talk a little bit. what little information we have on Rhea Ripley before the show is over. I promise it's not it's not a positive update, but we don't have a whole ton of information yet either. So the uh, on Windy City uh, riot, the main show kicked off with Rin Narita taking on uh, defeating Morenu Mar- Suzuki. Of course, this will not be the last time we see Narita at the end of the night. Uh, Stephanie Vakir defended her strong women's championship and then got challenged by Alex Windsor uh, for their next show. I do believe uh, four corner tag match. Congrats to uh, Shane Haste and Mikey Nichols finally getting uh, their first taste of new Japan gold. Uh, of course, that's a, you know, TMDK. Of course they were uh, TM 51 and NXT and we're on a kind of a good rise until Mikey got uh, released and, and poor Shane had to uh, be a slapjack. 
I will I will say um, <laughs> without without giving anything away, obviously, um, Rhea Ripley's opening Raw tonight. Mm, that's not good. So that that's not good. I don't. I do good. not think that's. Uh, I do not think that's good at all. Um, great match between Shoto Minu and Jack Perry. Jack Perry coming out draped in the Chicago flag, only to unveil his jacket that said uh, painted on the back saying Crimea River. And again, we've already talked about it, but again, I am still shocked at how a lot of Chicago was supportive of Jack. And I don't know, but I, I don't know. Would there have been a lot of people traveling for this show that it I wasn't would, necessarily? I wouldn't think so. That it wasn't necessarily a big, big Chicago crowd. I mean, God, he had a lot of support in Chicago, a lot more than I thought he would have. I thought they'd really need those right gear guys. Uh, the four corners tag match. That's when I think it started to really pick up a lot of great matches. Amino and Perry had a great match. Mustafa Ali and uh, Hiromo Takahashi had a great match. Hilarious at the end that Takahashi made Mustafa shake hands with, with Daryl Jr. Uh, that was even more hilarious. Uh, Takahashi was uh just got back from excursion and and Daryl Jr. got uh ripped abs. That was even funnier. Uh Bullet Club uh defeated uh Eddie Kingston Homicide and the United Empire in a uh, right rules match. Sabre Jr. got his title back from Riddle. Boy, that was a short uh reign, wasn't it? Bro. Well, I, if there's one thing that New Japan does, they listen to backlash. And and react accordingly. And I I think this was a, I think this was a response to. I I just I, I think this was a response to, people not being happy that Matt Riddle was holding a championship in New Japan, yeah. and I know he still has dates with the company. So I mean he's not technically done, but he might end up working those remaining dates and be gone. Like they might just they might just say this isn't worth it. Like remember. A couple of years ago, um, when New Japan did those tapings and they brought in Marty Scurll and the internet found out about it and they had a fit and New Japan just eliminated the footage and said, we're not going to use you like this could end up. This could end up happening with with Riddle as well. They might just say, yeah, we're going to work out your final dates and we're going to bid you good day. Have fun in MLW. I mean, that, well, that might be what ends up happening here. I mean, he did hold the title for only one less day than Tanahashi did, so I don't know. Uh, was uh, Nemeth supposed to face Tanahashi on this show, and then Tanahashi was hurt? I'm not sure of that. I don't know because I don't know if the plan all along was Nemeth and Ishii. I think I think if I heard the commentators right, I think Nemeth was supposed to defend his global title against Tanahashi, but he was hurt. Uh, but Nemeth and Ishii, good match, great finish. I, I love the finish between those two. And, of course, my boy, John Moxley and uh, Tetsuya Naito. I can't believe John Moxley's holding a, holding the top top prize in, in J New Japan, man. But man deserves it for a lot of reasons. The man deserves it. But And... Uh, Moxley uh, said, uh, got on the mic at the end of the show and said he was going to call out his young boy, Umino, to be the first challenger. But then Ren Narita attacked with uh, with that uh, jacked up thing. I don't know what the hell he's got, what they call it, but it's a big piece of wood with metal on it. But anyways, he attacked Moxley uh, and uh, to set up that title match probably uh, down the road there. But uh, I'm excited to see Mox and, and uh, Shota Umino go at it too down the road so overall damn good show by new japan don't you think i, th I thought it was an excellent show i i really did i thought new japan put their best foot forward they set up some good things for their uh show in california in, in a few weeks yep you know they announced their return to dc in august which i hope to hope to go to depending on the card um yep. I think it's. I think New Japan is doing their best to right the ship with all the talent that they've lost. I think AEW is accommodating them by allowing them to put the put their world championship on on a guy like John Moxley, allowing Eddie Kingston to be holding a championship over there. I think yep. I think AEW is like yeah, we might sign might sign some of your top guys, but we're gonna let you use our top guys. Yeah, you exactly. know, at at the same token. So. Exactly. 
Um, all right, let's see. We got about nine minutes till Raw. Let's talk about Rhea Ripley. Uh, this was uh, released here by Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful, also originally reported by PW Insider, uh, that Rhea Ripley was injured on Raw last week, but it may not be what you think it was. It was not the ch- that crazy chair shot that she took, but it was the tussle where they uh, collided into the wall which may be the reason for injury. It may be her shoulder from uh, colliding in with the wall that may be causing Rhea Ripley to possibly to drop the title. And as Matt said, Rhea Ripley is kicking off Monday Night Raw tonight, which is not good news. No, it, it doesn't. It does not seem to be. Does not seem to be good news at all. Um, she's had a great reign. With that title, you know, you know, she went to WrestleMania hurt. You know, she's been wearing that wrist. Yeah. Saying, try not to wear it in match. You're not doing the Roman thing, are you? No, not doing the Roman thing. Um, (laughs) But. Yeah. Look, regardless if it was the chair that led to a concussion or regardless if it was the shoulder, regardless if it's either or or both. This is a really shitty situation. And if Rhea has to vacate this title, that really freaking sucks. For the Sean Ross Sapp for the women's division right now. Sean Ross Sapp confirmed no heat on Liv Morgan on the situation. So just a freak accident. We'll find out in about eight minutes. Uh, let's move yeah. on to some uh, Drew McIntyre news. Uh, this also came down from Fightful today. Uh, they have learned that Drew McIntyre's contract uh, is up sooner than you think. I will also say this report also originally came from PW Insider. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fightful Select has learned that the deal is going to be up before June, which next month is May. So very soon is going to be the case. Those that Fightful have spoken to said that McIntyre has been professional in handling the contract situation, even though things have moved along much later than many have expected. Uh, Fightful was told that Vice President Dan Vertrell has only reached only reached out to McIntyre this past March and when McIntyre had already been booked for a match. With on WrestleMania, also a feud with CM Punk, and of course he is actively being advertised for Clash at the Castle. Which I, currently, if unless the contract gets taken care of, he will not be there. No, it's just. I kinda, would assume. I would assume that he's gonna. Re-sign. You would think. You can never know for sure, but you would you would think he's gonna stick around. I mean, there's a lot of money to be made with him and CM Punk. He's being booked so, very well right now, and a lot of people love this character of his, which was a heel character that is damn near babyface at this point. Because I think Punk might be the heel in this feud. One way, one way or another, regardless if he stays or leaves, he's going to get a big overseas moment at a big show this summer. Whether, yep. it's, whether it's with WWE at Clash Wembley. Of Castle <laughs> or whether it's in Wembley Stadium with AEW, one way or another, Drew is going to get a big a big overseas moment this summer. If gun to my head and I got to be right, I'm going to say it's going to happen in clash at the castle. I'm going to say WWE gets the deal done, but I said on this show for months, I thought he was with an offer that McIntyre can't refuse. It could happen. You you cannot roll anything out in pro wrestling right now. No, I said on the show for months that I expected drew to leave, but then he started getting booked very favorably, then started to become one of the top, pops of the company just because of how good his character has been especially against cm punk but also with seth rollins and so i've changed my tune to where i think he's going to resign but it'll be interesting to see all right let's go to dynasty this sunday on pay-per-view from st louis missouri on april 21st we've got eight matches scheduled i don't know if any more will be added on uh on dynamite or collision or not but uh here are the matches let's start off with well, let's just start off with the TBS Championship House Rules match. Julia Hart and Willow Nightingale. Do you expect a title change here, Matt? I do. I absolutely do. Six titles um, on the line, by the way, this uh, Sunday. As of now. Uh, I think the trio's, the trio's uh, six-band merger is going to happen there, too. With oh. The Bullet Club Gold and the Acclaimed. Be a claim. Um, yeah. but I, I do see Willow Nightingale winning this title. Like they've done all the setup in the world for for Willow and Mercedes at double or nothing. Julie is also going through some 
she's banged up. She's dealing with some injuries. If she can get through Dynamite and get through Sunday's match, they can give her some time off. Um, always sucks to have to take time off right off to come right right off of coming off a championship reign. But when you're hurt, you're hurt. Mm-hmm. So I, I'd I'd let her work there. I'd let her work Dynamite and uh, Dynasty on Sunday. Then I'd let her have let her have some time off to heal. But yeah, yep. I, well, to me, it's it's Willow's a, a no brainer here. Yeah, then you got Willow and, and Mercedes for the title after that. Man, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, trio's match, you got the House of Black against Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe. Uh, I, you know, I, I got to say that the House of Black's got to win this one to keep strong, especially if Julia loses. No, I, I agree. I, to me, this should this should lead to Copeland and Malachi for the TNT Championship, which Malachi so, should win. Yeah, well, I I'm not going that far, mm, okay? Because I like the Cope Open a great deal. True, and I and I want to see more. I want to see a, I want to see more of that before Copeland's dropping the title. Um, but I think I think we're gonna get some kind of dis like miscommunication and disagreement with Mark and and Eddie and Eddie. And it's it's going to end up costing them the the match, and I think Copeland will take the pin from Malachi. To It'll set probably up be a rematch a, at uh, the next pay per view match. So yeah, I, like I don't right. I don't think it'll be intentional. Like I don't think Eddie or Mark will purposely turn on one another, but I do think there'll be some kind of bickering and miscommunication between them, which will lead to to Copeland being the odd man out to take the loss. Timeless Tony Storm against Thunder Rosa. I I do not see Thunder Rosa winning. I don't either, but I just don't man, see, they, I, just, I just don't feel a, I just don't feel a, I just don't feel a momentum for her. Here, here's the thing with Thunder Rosa: if they put the t- the only way I'd say to put the title back on Thunder Rosa is if Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter were ready to come back. Yeah, and they can they could reignite that rivalry with her holding that title because that would be kind of great. Um, I do believe Dion has been teasing Britt's return. Yeah, sooner she's rather be than close. later. Like I'm not really sure when, but she's got to be close. I don't know if they want to hold on to that championship and do a title feud with Mariah and Tony, mm. or if when they finally explode at each other, it's not going to be for a title on the line. Yeah, I- I'm gonna say Storm to retain, but I'm not 100 percent confident on that at the moment. I'll probably have a better feeling after. Dynamite and Collision this week. Something something we're pretty confident in. AEW Continental Championship, Okada beating Pac, but that's gonna be a damn good match. Yeah, I, I think Okada retains there. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. But I, you, you just put the title on Okada, you can't take it off him already. No. Uh international title, strong and O'Reilly. I don't see it changing this fast, even though I'd love to see O'Reilly win it. I don't see it changing that fast. I I really want Kyle to win, but I think Wardlow will help strong retain unless unless cole's ready to come back because i think cole will come back and attack wardlow when he purposely costs one of the members of the undisputed kingdom their title we've already played we've already played our cards for the tag title ladder match between the bucks and ftr yeah yeah uh danielson will put over osprey in a year of match of the year contender yeah osprey for the win uh, and then it swerves time, ain't it, baby? Whose house? It's got to be Swerve's house. Ha- it it's has- Swerve's house. It's Swerve's time, man. All right, Monday Night Raw is literally the graphics are running right now. Uh, Dirty Dom is taking on Andrade. Sami Zayn against Chad Gable. Montreal Screwjob. Uh, Rhea Ripley is going to start off Raw. Jey Uso taking on Finn Balor. Sheamus returns. One of my favorites. Cody's going to be there. Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nile take on Candice and Indy. And Caden Carter and Katana Chance take on Chelsea Green and Piper Nevin. For Matt Black, this is Jeremy Bennett. Enjoy the week. Enjoy Raw. Enjoy Dynasty. And we'll be back next week with our uh, our thoughts on the pay-per-view. Have yourselves a good one.